Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to my first gameplay video on the Explorer format as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and today we're taking a look at Mono Black Aggro, a disruptive aggro deck with a ton of 1-drops, starting out with a Dread Wonder, a 2-1 that enters the battlefield tapped, and for 2 and a black we can return it from our graveyard to the battlefield if we're close to empty-handed. And then very similar is Gutter Bones, which can return from our graveyard to our hand if we pay 1 on a black if the opponent lost life this turn. Then we have Knight of the Ebon Legion, a 1-2 that gets plus 3, plus 3 and death touch until end of turn if we pump it up for 2 and a black. And then at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, it picks up a plus 1, plus 1 counter. So that's mostly going to be the opponent losing 4 or more life, but we can also potentially enable it ourselves with cards like Thoughtseize, costing 2 life to play to take a look at the opponent's hand and take away a non-land card, so very important against opposing combo decks. And then we also have cheap removal at 1 mana with Fatal Push, destroying a creature with mana value 2 or less, and if we can enable Revolt, that's 4 or less. Then at 2 mana we've got more aggressive creatures with Scrap Heap Scrounger, that cannot block, can return from our graveyard to the battlefield, for 1 on a black if we exile another creature from our graveyard. And then a Tenacious Underdog continues the theme of aggressive creatures that can potentially come back from the graveyard, in this case thanks to Blitz, which can also function as a card draw engine, also costs 2 life, so another way to potentially grow our own Knight of the Ebon Legion. And then we've got some more spot removal with 2 copies of Heartless Act, important for taking out creatures like Winota, Joiner of Forces, before it gets a chance to trigger. And then at 3 mana we've got a full set of Spawn of Mayhem, actually a 4-drop, but thanks to Spectacle we can play it for 3 mana, and thanks to all these aggressive 1 and 2-drops we can often enable it on turn 3, and then a 4-4 Flying Trample that will slowly drain both players and potentially pick up some plus 1 counters if we're low on life ourselves. And then we also have two copies of Graveyard Trespasser, a 3-3 with a bit of built-in protection thanks to Ward, making the opponent discard a card if they try and target it, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks we can exile a card from a graveyard, and if it's a creature we can drain the opponent as well, so it gives us a bit of a graveyard hate and can gain a bit of life back as well, and if it ever switches to the Nightbound side it becomes even more powerful. And then topping off our curve, two copies of Rankle can come down with Flying and Haste, and if it hits the opponent we can choose any number of modes between making each player discard a card, lose one life and draw a card, or sacrifice a creature. So also very synergistic with all the 1-drops we can get back from our graveyard, and by the time we play Rankle we're usually empty-handed, so we'll mostly punish the opponent. And then our mana base, a few ways we can approach it, could play Snowlands alongside Faceless Haven, which is arguably the better creature land over Hive of the Eye Tyrant, but if we play Hive we also get to play more copies of Castle Lothwain and not have to worry about having enough Snowlands, and then Castle a nice source of card advantage in the late game alongside the Blitz ability on Underdog. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is lacking some creatures. Double Thoughtseize could be good in certain matchups. But uh, I guess we'll give it a shot. We've got a Heartless Act as interaction at least. And then depending on the matchup, we might want to play the Knight first or we might want to Thoughtseize first. Stitcher Supplier points towards a Graveyard deck and Mardu points towards the Grease Fang combo deck. Which can be quite scary to face. Don't think I need to Thoughtseize right now. So I think I'm okay playing knights to kind of get something on the board. And then next turn I might thought seize maybe even twice. Opponent might be happy to chum block with the supplier. So they can maybe find an expensive vehicle to reanimate with Grease Fang. Now we could also just hang on to Heartless Acts. Although now with Dread Wonder we have more of an incentive to maybe thought seize plus play another one drop. Now these Grease Fang decks also play Can't Stay Away, which can bring back Grease Fang from the graveyard potentially, can also be flashed back. 
So if that's the case, double thought seize might not even be enough to disrupt the opponent's game plan. But then again, it's not like they have a vehicle to reanimate yet. So, we'll attack. Hope they don't mill over a vehicle. And then, if they do, hope they don't have both Grease Fang and can't stay away. Otherwise, there's an argument for passing with Heartless Act up, but then we're also not really doing much if the opponent doesn't play into it. That opponent's got a deadly dispute to draw. Fair enough. So now Thoughtseize is going to be even more effective. We see Grease Fang, Crocs and the Graveyard, although White Mana makes it difficult to cast. So let's have a look and see if we need to Thoughtseize twice. So, interesting spots. I don't think I need to play Dreadwanderer, since if they make me discard it, I can just bring it back. So Sorin is currently the only way they will be able to bring back Grease Fang. And then Fable, potentially also worth taking, as it just gives them a lot of card selection. I think that's what I'll do here. Take Sorin, take Fable. Also an argument for taking the Epicure, but... Fable also makes a blocker, so... And then we actually grow the knight because we lost for life ourselves. And then I'm fine if they thought sees me here. If they want to play Epicure, they still need to sacrifice the treasure. So that seems like a fine deal. Opponent's very far from ever escaping Croxa at the moment. And again, don't really care about Thoughtseize, so... So far, so good. Can attack if they take it. I could pump the knights. If they have another deadly dispute, then they're fine to chump and sacrifice. In which case, we'll just play a Dread Wanderer. And yeah, looks like they have another deadly dispute here. Okay. So your opponent gets to see quite a few new cards. But we get to add another creature to the board. Still have Heartless Act to at least deal with Grease Fang for one turn. And I'll put a stop just in case uh, they play Grease Fang and we don't get the chance to kill it before it triggers. So. Currently no vehicle in the graveyard. But the blood token could discard Parhelion. Opponent's gonna have a look with Thoughtseize, that happens. Seize Double Swamp Heartless Act, sadly none of our activated ability lands in play. Would love Hive of the Eye Tyrant to maybe exile a key card out of their graveyard, or castle to draw. But I guess for now we can pump our knight. Another Heartless Act. So I might want to actually keep a Heartless Act, because if our opponent sacrifices blood, discarding Parhelion, and then untaps, plays Grease Fang, we would be in trouble. Of course, they could also Thought Seize me first. But uh, we'll see if they have the mana for it. So yeah, that's the worst case scenario. Opponent having Grease Fang and the land to Thoughtseize. But our opponent could suspect some interaction here. Okay, well, lucky for us they did not cast a Thoughtseize. Of course, it does cost two lives. So it's understandable why they wouldn't. But then again, if we were empty-handed, we probably would have pumped with a knight. So, Grease Fang down, but they might still have other copies in hand or ways to bring it back. So we need to be able to close out the game quickly, because once they reanimate Parhelion and attack with it, we're gonna die very quickly. So our opponent's at 6. And uh, gotta cross our fingers that there's no second Grease Fang. There's also an argument for holding the Swamp in case they want to fire off a Thought Seize to check it out. But with cards like Dread Wanderer, we want to make sure we have all the mana we need to bring it back, or maybe to pump Knight twice. So your opponent could actually escape Croxa now if they sacrifice a treasure. Although it would be a chum block in Croxa, as we can pump our Knights, which threatens lethal. So not a huge concern. And yeah, there's Croxa, so if that's all they have, I'm pretty happy. 
And we can pump our knight twice if we'd like. So crocs are chumps. We pump. Damage happens. Opponent falls to two. And let's see if they can uh, find a way out. Harvester's not gonna do it. So yeah, our opponent might have had the win if they went for Thoughtseize, but always tricky if you cast Thoughtseize the turn prior and there was nothing left. So lucky to dob deck another Heartless Act. Another Epicure, but an all-out attack should still do it here. Unless they've got another Epicure. Nope, just a Blood Token sacrificed, discarding Thoughtseize. A grim reminder of this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty reasonable. Good mix of pressure, hand disruption, Creature interaction. Opponent taking a mulligan. And then we'll have to wait and see if we need to thought seize right away. Temple of Abandon, you know what that means. That means Tybalt's trickery. And that's exactly where we want turn one thought seize. And hopefully they only have the one trickery. Okay, double stone coil, so if they top deck another trickery, we could be in trouble. Opponent turns out a 2-2 stone coil. Can remove its counters with Heartless Act to essentially kill it. So the safest play for me is probably to Thought Seize the second stone coil in case they top decked another trickery. So I think we'll do that. Well, <laughs> never mind. Opponent with another stone coil in hand. And then Knights, I guess we can also pump to get past the stone coil. So opponent could still top deck another trick rate at any point. I doubt we're gonna run out Stone Coil, but never mind, opponent does. But we should be able to handle the Stone Coil assault pretty easily. So we'll remove some counters. Attack, play Gutter Bones. And then next turn, Spawn of Mayhem can fly over. And our opponent's very far from ever comboing off. So just a stone coil to work with. And yeah, can attack with both now. Empty our hands. We're at 12, so spawn is also close to picking up plus one counters if we fall below 10 life. And our opponent concedes. So yeah, managed to punish the trickery deck nicely. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands, not ideal, but hopefully we'll pick up some more expensive stuff and then Thoughtseize could punish any combo strategy. Opponents with a mulligan to six, and this looks like a Winota deck potentially with turn one elf. So do I want to Thoughtseize? Probably. Since we can Thoughtseize twice, we can take away a powerful three mana play. Alright, never mind, mono green it looks like. And yeah, we'll take Incubation Druids, and then they're pretty far from their various 5-drops. So don't even have to Thought Seize now if we don't want to. Could just double 1-drop, which might be better than Scrap Heap. And then next turn we can reevaluate. Okay, Castle is scary, so next turn that lets them easily cast Cavalier. And uh, we'll Thought Seize it away. So we'll attack with a team. And then probably better off going triple one drop. Keep up the pressure. Although with a land they could still storm the festival. No lands. 
Don't think this is a collected company deck since they're playing a bunch of expensive cards. So I'm okay attacking with the team. Opponent takes eight. And now uh, Spawn of Mayhem might be able to close out the game before Storm the Festival can find something powerful. And our opponent explodes, so they must have drawn some expensive cards in the meantime, but unable to cast them. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable enough. And hopefully we're up against a creature deck where a double Heartless Act will shine. And uh, I think Dreadwonder first. So red-green could be a Naya Winota deck, where Heartless Act should be pretty decent. Unless they play Chariots, which uh, kinda blanks all our attackers, and Heartless Act is not the best answer to it. Could see a Brutal Cathar. Spellbinder instead, that's okay. Still definitely a card that's played in some Winota versions. It is a human, so it doesn't trigger Winota, but yeah, could potentially lead to a Chariot next turn, which is still good without Winota. So, play a land attack with the team. If they block Knight, I'll pump. And now we'll Gutter Bones, keep up Heartless Act. Not sure yet if I'm killing Spellbinder if that attacks. Probably not. Right, it's gonna be an Innkeeper first. That's okay. And Spellbinder attacks for three, we'll take it. So, could kill the Innkeeper. Not the best value play, but it does allow me to tap out since then we know it has a lot less carry. All right, never mind, opponent scoops it up. I mean, we were pretty far ahead on board, and double Heartless Act that they know about. It's going to be quite powerful if their hand does not include cards like Chariot. I'll take the win. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, this hand seems decent. Tempted to play Knight on one, and then double Thoughtseize on two to grow the Knight. And Fatal Push can clear any 1-drop they would play anyways. Now if they have removal for Knight, we might regret it. Stomping Ground into Lanor Elves. Okay, so I could double Thoughtseize, or I could Fatal Push Thoughtseize. Start by attacking and then playing the first Thoughtseize and then we'll decide. Opponent is indeed playing Naya Winota. And their hand is pretty clunky with Agent and Kenrith. So I can take the Innkeeper. They're not going to be able to play melee anytime soon. And then... If I take Innkeeper, I can Fatal Push the Elf. And I'm okay with not growing the Knight. And then another Thoughtseize can take Winota at some point. Double Thoughtseize would have been reasonable too, although a small risk if they draw a powerful 3-drop they could play, like maybe a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Perfect, now I can attack and play Spawn to keep up the pressure, and there's no real need for me to Thoughtseize yet. And they're free to use melee and sacrifice a land. Okay, so can attack and pump my knights. See if there's a response. But I doubt it. Opponent takes eight, so they're on a two turn clock here. And this is gonna be the final nail. Revealing Blade Historian. I guess I'll take the removal spell, and then if they play Winota, they would have to chump with it.
Gonna be an elite spellbinder to chump instead. And yeah, our opponent scoops it up just too far behind on board. So yeah, we had a nice disruptive start, and the powerful Winota deck never really got to combo off. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow with a lot of expensive cards, but I think it's still a keep. Up against a red-black. Play a gutter bones. So red-black could be Sacrifice, could be the Grease Fang reanimator deck. In which case, we do have a Hive we can eventually activate, although that might be too slow. Graveyard Trespasser would be another good card. So there's a Harvester which we can take out. And I think I'm okay just pushing it. As opposed to offering the trade. Since I want enough creatures to enable Spawn of Mayhem next turn. Opponent appears to be just red-black. Thoughtseize can take away my spawn. So that's too bad. And if they have removal, they probably want to kill the Dread Wanderer. Which we won't be able to return as easily. Okay, so yeah, the mid-range deck successfully throwing off our curve here. They can play Bone Crusher now, at the very least. Frostodon. Alright, at least Rankle still lines up quite favorably. Can make each player sacrifice a creature. And then, do we want to do anything else with Rankle? Could make each player discard. Discard my Swamp, although still useful for Hive activations. Don't really want to let each player draw necessarily, since on average the mid-range deck has better top decks. So I think it's just going to be Sacrifice a Creature for now. And then the extra mana also comes in handy with replaying my 1-drops. Alright, Pwn is good at Hazoret. So that's quite scary, hits us for 5. But still gonna die to Rankle here. So... Can go ahead and play Knights, play Gutter Bones, get back Dread Wanderer, and then sacrifice Dread Wanderer to Rankle. And the air opponent has seen enough. We'll make them sacrifice Hazoret, and then can make him discard as well now that we're empty handed. And then our late game is taken care of between Hive, Rankle, drawing cards, and all these one drops coming back. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand does not feature any real interaction no removal, no hand disruption, just a lot of one drops and then some powerful creatures if we draw land. Yeah, it's not the ideal draw, but I don't think it's a mulligan either, so I'll try it. This would be a decent hand against a more controlling strategy. That doesn't deal with our 1-drops all that well. Temple Guard and Gilded Goose, so that does seem like a Winota deck. And we don't have the best hand to fight it at the moment. So we'll have to get pretty lucky and hope the opponent doesn't have a powerful draw. Innkeeper. So yeah, turn 3, could see Winota with two triggers, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. I think playing Underdog to try and block Innkeeper at the very least, in case they don't hit anything with Winota, so at least we kill it for the future, is probably the way to go. But uh, if they have Winota, we could just be dead here. Even a chariot would be quite powerful. Alright, they've got a dream start. Let's see if they get lucky with uh, Winota triggers. Well, that's one miss. And a Kenrith. Well, could have been worse, to be honest, but we're still in trouble here. Kill the Innkeeper. 
And still no removal for Winota, so they still have a Gilded Goose to trigger her. So I could play Spawn if I suicide attack my underdog, basically. They might play around Fatal Push and not block, which would be reasonable on their part. So I think that's what we'll try. Opponent takes it, play Spawn. And this is not a race we're gonna win, necessarily, but probably the best we can do at the moment. Brutal Cathar, Exile Spawn. Hit us for 9, plus whatever the Goose finds off Winota. So yeah, we managed to disrupt the Winota deck last time. This time, with our opening hands, we just didn't have any interaction. And when the Winota deck gets to do its thing, it's incredibly powerful. As we fall to 4. And a Gutter Bones is not gonna save us. At first, when building this deck, I included a few copies of Ray of Enfeeblement, which is quite nice against Winota, as it can take it out for one mana, also hits Lenor Elves and Brutal Cathar, but then I started facing a wider variety of decks, so I ended up taking it out. But yeah, if you keep running into Winota, definitely a card to have on your radar. Alright, GG's. See if they get another Winota trigger here. Just Kenrith to cross the finish line, fair enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We'll see if we need to Thought Season 1. Triome points towards a more controlling deck. Don't necessarily put them on Tibal's Trickery, so I think I'm okay playing a Knight first. So maybe just kind of control. So could go for an underdog. Really want a thought cease when they have four mana available for the most part. So we can maybe take away Wandering Emperor. And then now we have potentially four power to trigger Knight. And Scrounger is a nice pickup. So now we could attack Thoughtseize and Scrounger. Opponent contemplating a removal spell, maybe. Takes it. Alright, let's Thoughtseize, have a look. Maybe take away a Sweeper. Opponent, ooh, spicy. So this is a combo deck featuring mutate creatures like Octopus and then Lord Drakus to get back spells from the graveyard, and then Gideon to prevent losing the game after they take extra turns with the 3-mana uh, red-white sorcery. So, not sure what to take here. I guess Justice Strike is their only removal spell. Could take Iteration because it's a 2-for-1, opponent planning to flash in an Octopus end of turn here. And I guess Scrounger wouldn't block it profitably, so I could instead play a Knight of the Abel Legion, which would pick up a counter. Doesn't die to Justice Strike. So maybe I take Gideon as kind of the more unique element. And then Justice Strike lines up poorly against our Knight anyway. So that blocks the Octopus. So yeah, the opponent's game plan is to eventually take infinite turns by mutating Lord Drakis, taking extra turns, and then if they have a Gideon with an emblem, they can't lose the game by taking extra turns. And yeah, opponent packs it in, so managed to disrupt their combo just enough here for them to throw in the towel. Okay, so yeah, we definitely faced a wide variety of decks today, even though Trickery and Winota are those high variance decks that uh, can maybe leave a bad taste in your mouth. Overall, I've been pretty happy playing Explorer and facing a pretty wide range of matchups. So yeah, Mono Black Aggro seems like one of the best decks in the format right now, especially with Tibal's Trickery being quite popular in Best of One and Thoughtseize being the best way to punish it. So give it a try if you've got the cards for it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, 
have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.